Welcome to the northern end of Bryce Canyon National Park here in southern Utah. We're looking south from Highway 12 onto the Ponzagat Plateau and the spectacular pink layers of the Claron Formation, the rocks that make up some of the hoodoos that you see at Bryce Canyon. Here along Highway 12, there's equally spectacular exposures of the Claron Formation, these pink uh, limestones, kind of muddy limestones that formed around a freshwater lake during the Eocene about 50 million years ago. But the, the goal and the focus of this video is we're going to scramble up to this overhanging cliff up here for a spectacular exposure of an interesting structure that has a really cool geologic story. So we'll go ahead and head up the steep little hill and head up to that overhanging cliff there. Just made it across the snow patch here, going across the road, but really a nice example here of some of this limestone. In this place, case, we can see some of the calcite that's been recrystallized. Some of the limestone particles have been broken up and then calcites moved through it and re-precipitated that material to make these really attractive white crystalline areas in the limestone. Just thought I'd give you a quick look at that. Another little patch of it here. Again, these are all freshwater limestones. But we're gonna head up the snowy rocky patch here, up to this exposure below this overhanging cliff. All right, so we made it up the hill here to this steep overhanging cliff that's the focus of this video. And what I think is one of the cooler geologic features in this part of southern Utah with a really fascinating story to tell. So we can see here we, we're in the Claron Formation. We're in these pink units, this pink limestone that forms the fantastic scenery we see here at Bryce Canyon National Park. But this overhanging rock layer um, is kind of interesting in just the way it's formed and, um, you know, just thinking about different processes that might have formed this layer. As we work our way across this rock face, uh, it's a little less overhanging uh, until you get down to this end over here. And we're gonna hike over here in a second and look at some of these exposures on this end. So let me start with, um, as we unravel this story a little bit, let's start with the geologic map for the entire state of Utah, because that plays a role in the story that we're gonna form here. And like any geologic map, all the colors on here designate rocks of a different age and a different type. And you can see a few trends on here, the Uinta Mountains, the old Precambrian rocks that form this east-west mountain range are shown here in, in brown and white. You can make out parts of the Colorado Plateau down here in shades of blue, green, brown. But what sticks out here on this state map of, of Utah is this anomalous pink area that kind of interrupts the basin and range parts of the Colorado Plateau. This is a huge expanse of volcanic rocks from about, oh, let's see, about 30 or so million years ago up to about 15 million years ago. This is the Marysville volcanic field. So this is a big swath of the state that is formed from both intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks. And of course the extrusive rocks are mainly what we see here in pink, but I believe there's some intrusive rocks there as well. And where we are here at Bryce Canyon, it's a little hard to tell. Um, we're probably about somewhere about here. So we're near the southern edge or just beyond the southern edge of this volcanic field. And that plays a role in our story here. What we're looking at here is we look at this overhanging cliff is this is a structural feature known as the rubies in thrust fault. So these rocks that are forming this overhang have been shoved or have been thrust to the south over the rocks at the base here. Now it's all in the same unit. It's all in the Claron formation. So you don't see a big contrast in color here because the thrust fault is thrusting some of the formations rock over the top of itself. But this is a structure that can be traced out in an east-west direction for, I believe, tens of kilometers, you know, uh, tens of miles or so. Um, and it just barely clips this corner of 
Bryce Canyon National Park. Um, and so the th what's interesting about this thrust fault is we have lots of thrust faults in Utah, but most of those thrust faults trend in a north-south direction in general because they were compressed from the east and west as plates were colliding on the west coast of North America that was shoving rocks to the east. So most of our thrust faults run in an east, or excuse me, north-south direction, but this one's anomalous in that it runs east to west. And so it was a bit of a anomaly and a curiosity to geologists for a while, but we think we've pieced together most of the story. So let me switch over my clipboard here and show you a cross section from a paper. And I'll be sure to include the, um, the, the reference to this paper as well. So what we have here on the left side of the cross section is the Marysville Volcanics shown in pink, but also there was intrusive rock. So there were magmas being intruded into the subsurface. And the combination of this st thick stack of volcanic rocks and the amount of volume that the magma required as it intruded into the subsurface meant that the rocks on the flanks off to the side here were being pushed. And in this case, they're being pushed to the south. This is a north-south cross section. So this is the area to the north of us, the pink rocks I showed you on the geologic map of Utah. And then we get everything being pushed out to the south. And here's the rubies in thrust fault down here. Uh, I'll make sure I include this this diagram as well. But the rubies in thrust fault is shoving rocks to the south, uh, placing rocks over the top of themselves in an older on top of younger type of progression. And this is the exposure here where the rubies in thrust fault actually uh, manifests itself here at the surface. So let's head over to this section of cliff and see what we can discern by looking at this exposure of the thrust fault. So these are all these pink limestones of the Claron formation. But what you might start to see here as the cliff becomes overhanging again, is you might start to pick out some striations, some lines running on these overhanging cliff faces here. And there's some beautiful ones down here, a little hard to get to. Um, but you can hopefully see these striations on this overhanging face. As we look up above us here, we can see some more of these and they're running perpendicular um, to the, the, the surface of the, the cliff or pretty much in the direction I'm showing here with my hand. So these, of course, would be what we call slicken lines. As the rocks were being pushed in the direction of view here, they were being shoved up over the top of themselves and the friction between the rocks is what was generating these scratch marks, these striations, what we call slicken lines on the fault plane or on these fault surfaces themselves. So just really spectacular exposures here above Highway 12 of these fault surfaces with these slicken lines here. Really incredible. And each little step here, like there's a little small little fault plane there. Another one up here that juts out from the cliff face. Uh, each one of these is part of that thrusting or that thrust fault sequence or package of thrust faults. Pretty incredible. Um, one of the cooler little spots and maybe a bit of a, a secret to the public, but fairly well known to geologists are these little these thrust faults here. Um, that defined this bigger thrust package as everything was being pushed to the south and spreading was occurring away from the Marysville volcanic field um, just from the sheer uh, weight of it. There's also another cool story I'll try to piece together with in another video uh, at another time when I can find some good exposures. It's actually a massive, what they think might be maybe the world's largest or one of the world's largest gravity slides uh, from the volcanic field to the south. And it formed these huge breccia deposits and other just really interesting uh, features. 
So for now, we'll go ahead and sign off from Bryce Canyon National Park, the Rubies in Thrust Fault. Thanks as always for joining me on this little adventure. Appreciate your time. Make sure you give the, the video and the channel a thumbs up, subscribe, share, and help us spread uh, this knowledge of you know, geology and education and just spinning and selling and telling the Earth's great stories to the rest of the public. Thanks again.